Okay, let's start our lesson. <coughs> Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambodasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambodasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambodasa Good evening everyone. <coughs> Last week we talked about uh, what is meditation, the definition of meditation. To conclude uh, what is meditation, well, I, I talk about uh, three definitions. The first one is a, uh, to develop or to cultivate summertime with personal or serenity and insight. But that is not very clear to you. So later, later part, I will uh, clarify in details with the help of the sodas. And the easiest one to understand what is meditation, what meditation is, um, to develop or cultivate mindfulness or sati. So to develop mindfulness, uh, uh, in our body, in our feeling, uh, in our mind, and met, uh, physical and mental phenomena, the dharma. So that is a, the easiest way to understand. So if you are mindful all the time, that is meditation. Whatever you are doing, even you are cooking. So anytime, if you are mindful, that means you are meditating. That, that is, I think, the, e the easiest way. And the last one I, I talk is a, uh, to develop the noble full path. So I think that is very important. So the whole topic about meditation will be based on, on the last definition, to develop the noble full path. So if, if we develop the noble full path, so that means we are meditating. If you are meditating, that means you are developing uh, the noble full path. So that is the last explanation. Um, for that reason, so we uh, we talk about the fat salmon, dharma chaka, bhavotana soda. So dharma chaka, bhavotana soda talk about the four noble truth. So if we summarize the fat salmon, it can be Categorize, uh, we, can, we, we have a three category. The first one, three part. So the first one, uh, the Buddha said that as a religious uh, spiritual passing, just like in monks and nuns, so they have to avoid two extremes the pursuing of uh, happiness in sensual pleasures and pursuing of self modification, following self modification practices without going to extremes uh, the buddha said that second part the buddha announced that uh, the a four noble path is the middle way uh, to attain uh, peace and nibbana and the third part the buddha said that the buddha declare uh, discovery of the noble uh, the no uh, four noble truth. So when we study the first salmon, the first one, the Buddha suggested that not to fall, not to uh, to avoid two extremes. And secondly, and the Buddha declare the discovery of the mirror way or the noble uh, the noble path, uh, the noble full path. And the last one, the last one is uh, the Buddha declared that he decla uh, he discover. Uh, uh, four noble truth. So I think that is a, the summary of the first salmon. So last week we talk about to avoid two extremes, and we also talk about a little bit about 
the noble for path. So this is from the first sermon. The Buddha said that without veering to either of these extremes, that the Tagata has discovered the middle way, Majima Padipada, which gives rise to vision, which gives rise to knowledge, which lead to peace, to direct knowledge, to enlightenment, to Nibbana. So the Buddha declared that if someone follow the noble full path, so they will have vision, knowledge, and peace, direct knowledge, and Nibbana. So the Buddha, uh, how to say, uh, how to say that, guarantee that, right? If someone follow the noble full path, the middle way, so they were attain Nibbana. I think uh, as a Buddhist, the noble full path is very important. Last week also, uh, I, I talk about this one a little bit. The noble full path start with the right view and right thought. So that is called wisdom. So later part, we will discuss in detail so what is the right view and what is the right thought. So only if we have a right view and right thought, then our speech, our action, our livelihood will be right. So that is a more, uh, more part, more contact. That is called morality. So if our speech and action and livelihood are right, then we will have a right effect, right mindfulness, and right concentrations. So that is called concentrations and other concentrations. So that is the, the noble full path. In some of the soda, the Buddha said that if we follow the noble full path, we will have right knowledge, right realization. So this is a, the noble full path. So later part, we will discuss in detail. This is the most important practice in Buddhism. The reason why you know we study the first sermon is very important. Uh, it is connected with the meditation. So our topic is meditation. Actually, the four noble truths talk about why we are we need to do meditation. So what are the results of meditation? Actually, the first noble truth, suffering. So we have a lot of sufferings, we have a lot of problems. For that reason, we need to meditate. Then the problem and suffering also have the origin or the cause. That is the second noble truth. So if we meditate, that means if we practice the noble full path, we will have a peace of mind, Nibbana. Ultimately, Nibbana. So I think everything is linking each other. The four noble truths are linking each other. So the last one, the noble full path, talk about meditation. So we have a lot of suffering in our life. For that reason, we need to meditate. So that problem, those sufferings, and those problems also the cause or the origin that is the second noble truth. If we remove by practicing meditation or by following the noble full path, we will be able to remove the cause of our suffering. If we can remove the cause of our suffering, that is called cessation of suffering. That is Nibbana. So these four are linking each other. For that reason, we need to understand the noble full path. So I want to point out the importance of the noble full path again. Uh, Professor T. W. Rick Davis, uh, the founder of Palita Society, and he is the one who 
uh, make awareness the importance of Pali canons in the West. He's from uh, England, and he founded Pali Society, and he translated teachings of the Bora, especially Pali texts, into English. So he had been teaching uh, uh, the university in England at the comparative study of religions, comparative study of religions, or great religions. So this is what he said. And then by understanding his background, and we will understand uh, the importance of the Noble Eightfold Path. Let's see, I explain this one, but for those who are new, for those who didn't attend uh, this class this uh, last year, then I explain this one again. He is a Pali scholar, and also uh, he combated uh, to Buddhism from Christianity. Um, actually, he said that, Buddhist or no Buddhist, I have examined every one of the great religious systems of the world. He know great world, uh, the religions of the world. And in none of those have I found anything to surpass in beauty, comprehensiveness, the noble evil part of the Buddha. He couldn't see any teachings in other religions that surpass the noble evil part in terms of beauty, in terms of comprehensiveness. It's a very important one. He's a great scholar from England. He combated to Buddhism from other religions, uh, from Christianity. That is his comment. And he said that, I am content to shape my life according to that path. And then that is very important for Buddhists. Actually, he said that, he is content to shape his life. As a Buddhist, I think you can shape your life according to the Noble Eightfold Path. I think uh, understanding the Noble Eightfold Path, therefore, is very important. Only if you understand correctly, you will be able to practice it. If you practice, then you will stop your suffering. So this is a second uh, contains in the, the first sermon, and the third one is for noble truth. So uh, the Buddha declare discovery of the four noble truths in his the first sermon. So the four noble truths is the central teachings of the Buddha, very important teachings of the Buddha. It is command to all Buddhist schools, whether Theravada or Mahayana, or Vajrayana. So, this is the central teachings of the Buddha. If you, wherever Buddhist schools uh, you go, you will find these teachings, teachings of the Buddha. So, three years ago, I used to uh, listen a, a series of lectures uh, taught by Mahayana Mank, who is living in the United States. It's very informative, very enlightening. So actually, he is teaching the noble for sorry, uh, for noble truth, uh, using uh, a lot of resources. So actually, uh, the noble truth, for noble truth, is the central teachings of the Buddha. So it is common to all Buddhist schools. For that, for that reason, the discourse says it is known as the special teachings of the Buddha. Buddha Samokansika Desana, which is the last aspect of graduate discourse. Actually, I explained that graduate discourse. Dana, Sila, Sakakata, and, and also Bhavana. These are the graduate discourse. So, by looking at this one, so you will understand the importance of the noble for, uh, for noble truth. 
Mahahati Padobama Soda, Majamanikaya, Soda number 28. Mahahati Padobama means the simile of elephant footprint. So this is a very famous, uh, one of the famous soda from Bali Canon. So in that soda, uh, Venerable Sariboda is talking to uh, his disciples. So he said that, um, Venerable Sariboda said this one, Friends, just as the footprint of any living being that walks can be placed within an elephant footprint, and so the elephant's footprint is declared the chief of them because of its great sight. That is a simile. So take it as a simile. You might think that uh, the footprint of elephant nowadays is uh, the biggest. But of course, in earlier time, dinosaur. <laughs> but just take it as a simile, metaphor. Actually, the Buddha gave, uh, Venerable Sari Buddha gave uh, example at that time. So, but of course, if the dino dinosaur survive nowadays, so that metaphor will have to change. The footprint of dinosaur. <laughs> so he said that uh, uh, any footprint or that any animals, any living beings, including human beings, so it can be placed uh, within the footprint of elephant. And he said that so too, all wholesome states, Kusala Dharma, can be included in the Four Noble Truth. He said that all wholesome states, all wholesome deed, whether you're talking about Dhana or Sila or Bhavana, anything, it can be included in the Four Noble Truth. So that me all the teachings of the Bora can be included in the Four Noble Truths. Four Noble Truths is very comprehensive. Wherever you say, it is included in the Four Noble Truths. A very famous simile. So a man, the footprint of uh, living beings, the footprint of elephant is the biggest. So wherever you call regarding with horse and state or horse and deed or horse and actions, so all these horse and state can be included in the Four Noble Truths. So by looking at this soda, you can understand the importance of Four Noble Truth. For that reason, we say that the central teachings of the Buddha, that the Buddha declare in the, the first sermon that he discover four noble truths. That is unhappy for. The Buddha used not no su not no sutte su su unhappy for. It is not happy for. Because before the Buddha enlightenment, people are following two extremes to achieve happiness, to attain happiness. Some people will pursue happiness in sensual pleasures. And some ascetics some uh, spiritual people, so they are following uh, set modification practices. They are torturing their body, they are torturing their mind. They believe that through set modification, they will attain happiness. But the Buddha said that those two extremes have to be avoided as a spiritual passing, have to follow the middle way, Majima Patipada. Samadhi Soda from Sauda Nikaya. The Buddha said that bhikkhus develop concentrations. Here, you can see the word develop, bhaveta. So our topic is bhavana. So if we look at this soda, developing concentrations is meditation. So I, I just give you some example. If we look at this soda, 
if you can if you develop concentrations, that is meditations. But concentration should be right concentrations, yes. <clears throat> and the Buddha said that a bhikkhus who is concentrated understand things as they really are. So if a person is concentrated, if their mind is concentrated, so they will see the real nature of physical and mental phenomena. The Buddha said that a bhikkhus who is concentrated understand things. Here things me, it can be physical, it can be mental. Things in the are as they really are, in their true natures. So I think this soda is very important. This is the first soda of Sacha Sanyoda. The first soda of the discourses or the Four Noble Truth. And what does he understand it really is? So that means, what are the, rea uh, the realities? What are the truth? The Buddha said that he understands as it actually is. This is suffering, the first one. This is the origin of suffering, second one. This is the cessation of suffering, third one. This is the way leading to cessation of suffering, and the last one. So these, these are four noble truths. Many Buddhist scholars, they don't want to use the word suffering. <laughs> They're trying to avoid it. So they, some people, they will use uh, unsatisfactoriness, using many, uh, uh, how do you say, arguing that uh, we shouldn't use the dokka, the word dokka does not mean suffering. But actually, this is a translation of Bhikkhu Bhari. And uh, actually, the, I think, um, for me, I prefer Dokka translate as a suffering. Because as a Buddhist, no point to hide the reality. But here, the Buddha just tell the truth. This is the truth. So there is no point to hide under the carpet. So we have to tell the truth. That is suffering. That is a problem. That is very important. The Buddha used the word Dokka in every Uh, everyone not Four Noble Truths. If you look at Four Noble Truths, you will find the word suffering. So the first one, suffering is safe. Second one, the origin or the cause of suffering. So we have to translate the word toka as a suffering. Have to go, you know, straightforward. So the Buddha, straightforward. No point to hide under the carpet. For, for that reason, um, so I, uh, one of the uh, scholars from US, and he, so in his in her documentary film, and she said that, so one of the significant, uh, significance of Buddhist, Buddhist teachings is that they will not hide suffering under the carpet. They will tell the truth. That is suffering. That is a problem. So in the West, she said that in the West, people tend to hide suffering under the carpet. So I think one of the significance of Buddhism is we just tell the truth. We just tell the reality. But here, the Buddha said that what are the reality? What are the truth? Uh, suffering? the origin of suffering, and cessation of suffering, and the way leading to cessation of suffering. So that means if you meditate, if you develop your concentrations, so you will see the reality. You will see suffering by itself, and the cause of it, and cessation of suffering, and the way that lead to 
cessation of suffering. So if, if we look at this soda also, we understand the importance of Four Noble Truths. Another soda from Sandra Nikaya, Samasamboda soda. So in this soda, the Buddha said that he claimed as a Buddha only after he realized the Four Noble Truths. So if we look at uh, many sodas in Majjama Nikaya, so you will clearly understand how the Buddha became the Buddha, how Prince Siddhartha became the Buddha. The first, he understand, uh, he, uh, he attained four jhana. Then based on four jhana, he can recollect his previous lives. And second one is, he can recollect uh, the life of other people. And also how they, uh, how they uh, were born in happy and unhappy destinations, good and bad destinations. So based on that, he realized four noble truths. Four noble truths. These are suffering, these are the cause of suffering, based on his own life, as well as the life of other people. And he realized that these are suffering. So this is the cause of suffering. So this is cessation of suffering. This is the way that lead to cessation of suffering. So if we study all the soda from Majjama Nikaya, so you will understand that uh, the Buddha Prince Siddhartha became the Buddha, realizing four noble truth. For that reason, the Buddha said that uh, it is because he has fully awakened to these four noble truths as they really are. That the Tathagata is called the Arahan, the perfectly enlightened one, or Samasambhoda. So if, you, if we look at this one also, you will understand the importance of Four Noble Truth. So in one of the soda in Sauda Nikaya, Koti Gama Soda. So this soda is recorded in Mahabrinibana Soda as well. So Mahabrinibana Soda record two years, the last two years of the Buddha. So that me even just before he passes away, the Buddha reminded separate time to the monks the importance of Four Noble Truth. So that is the uh, Kodigama Soda. Uh, uh, the Buddha said that. Because it is because of not understanding, not penetrating the Four Noble Truths that you and I have room and wonder through this long course of samsara. And I and you are going around samsara because we do not realize Four Noble Truth. So that means the long course of samsara, according to dependent originations, is the mess of the mass of suffering, Tukka Kanda. So, uh, Dipana origination, you, the word Tukka Kanda, the mass of suffering. So, only we understand Four Noble Truths, we can stop Sansara, and we can stop the mass of suffering. So, that is very important. Four Noble Truths is very important. So what are the four noble truths? The first one, the noble truth of suffering. Dokkha, Ariya, Satcha. So you can read in the Soda. And second one, the noble truth of the origin of suffering or the cause of suffering. Dokkha, Samudhiya, Ariya, Satcha. And third one, the noble truth of cessation or suffering. Dukkha, Nidora, 
Ariya Satcha. That is Nibbana. And the fourth one, the noble truth of the way leading to cessation of suffering. That is the noble evil path. Dukkha Nidora Gamini Patipata Ariya Satcha. So that is four noble truth. As I, early, as I last week, as I said that, this is the advanced teachings of the Bora. Don't be intimidated <laughs> by hearing the Four Noble Truth. Especially, I think, um, the Noble Four Path can be applied in our daily life as a lay person. But if you want to become a spiritual person, you can apply in all the teachings of the uh, Four Noble Truth. Any question up to here? No question. Okay, let's go. What is suffering according to the Buddha? Now this because is the noble truth of Suffering. Path is suffering. Aging is suffering. Illness is a suffering. Death is a suffering. Can you reject? Nobody, nobody can reject. <laughs> Union with what is Displeasing is suffering. So if you are a reunion with what is displeasing is suffering. Separation from what is pleasing is suffering. If you are staying with the somebody you don't like, is suffering. If you are eating the food you don't like, is suffering. If you are staying in a place that you don't like is suffering. When you're walking, the job that you do not like is also suffering. Nobody can reject. Separation from what is pleasing is suffering. If you stay away from uh, your beloved one, your family, your house, your country, it's also suffering. Not to get what one wants is suffering. Sometimes you want something, but you cannot get it. It's also suffering. Very easy, very straightforward. In brief, the five aggregates subject to clinging are suffering. So this is a technical term. So we will study in detail in later part. Just I want to point out, so what are the, uh, bring up what are the four noble truths. So if you look at this one, straightforward, right? Everything is suffering. Don't worry if you do not understand. So we will study in detail. Uh, with the help of the soda, uh, Satchawipanga soda from Majamanikaya. This noble truth of suffering is to be fully understood. Prayenya, that's very important. So we have suffering, we have a problem. So, what we have to do with the suffering, with our suffering, with our problem, is to be understood. We have to try to understand our suffering, our problem. Trying to look at bravely. So what are the, your problem? What are your suffering? So to, regarding with uh, the regarding with the first noble truth, the Buddha said that in our part regarding with the suffering is 
trying to fully understand, trying, trying to understand fully. That's very important. Straightforward, the Buddha talk about the suffering, but what the Buddha said is we have to understand our suffering, our problem fully. No need to hide our problem. Nowadays, I think uh, human nature is we want to hide our problem, our suffering. So that is a, I think it's not in according with the Buddha's teachings. So we have to know our problem. And the Buddha said that, that's because in regard to things unhappy for, and not no, no sutesu. That's very important. In regard to things, in, in regard to suffering, I have before. For normal suffering, but of course, everyone can understand. But regarding with the last one, in brief, the five aggregate subject to clinging are suffering. The last one, especially the last one, it is a half before. Nobody talk about it. So the Buddha is the first one who point off. So this is suffering. So there arose in me vision, knowledge, wisdom, truth knowledge, and light. In the, the, in the, the first sermon, the Buddha said that. So this is a suffering, according to Buddhism. Later part, we will go in detail. Second one, the origin of suffering. So what are the origin or the cause of our suffering. And the Buddha said that now this bhikkhus is the noble truth of the origin of suffering. It is this craving lead to renewed existence accompanied by delight and lust, seeking delight here and there. It's very, a little bit uh, technique. So later we will study in detail. Craving or attachment. Normally we have delight and lust in sensual pleasures. And seeking delight here and there. That our, our mind tend to seek something uh, that, that is pleasant. Our mind tend to reject something that are unpleasant. That's also craving, another type of craving. Craving for sensual pleasures. Something that we can enjoy with our senses. Something that we can reject with our senses. Sometimes pleasant things, we enjoy it. Unpleasant things, we reject. We reject with the unhappiness, with the hatred and anger. Craving for existence. So we have a lot of existences. Later part we will study in detail. And also craving for extermination. And we also have non-existence. So we crave for it. So three type of craving. Craving for sensual pleasures, craving for existence, craving for extermination or uh, non-existence. This noble truth of the original sufferings is to be abandoned. We have to abandon craving. <clears throat> so this is very important, to be abandoned. So the first one is to be understood. And second one, to be abandoned. We have to abandon craving. Like and dislike. <laughs> we have a lot of like, a lot of dislike. If we overcome life and dis like and dislike, then you will have a peace of mind. Unpleasant one, dislike. You don't like it. Pleasant one, you like it too much. If we cannot overcome that state of mind, that is called craving. 
and we will have we will not have a peace of mind. Even though you see unpleasant one, even though you hear pleasant one, you don't have like and dislike. You just aware things as they really are. If we can overcome, that is called nibban, a uh, peace of mind. Uh, that is called the cessation of suffering. Dukkha nidora. So this this one is second uh, third one, third noble truth. Now this bhikkhus is the noble truth of cessation of suffering. Cessation of suffering. It is the reminder that fading away and cessation of that same craving. So if we can, if we can stop craving towards sensual pleasures, towards existence and no existence, that is called cessation of suffering. As I earlier said that, if you overcome like and dislike, you will have cessation of suffering, no suffering at all. For that reason, mindful people and wise people, they don't have a like and dislike, and they will treat people equally. Even the, well, when they are treating the people they don't like, but they will do on their part. On their part. There is no bias. Whether they like or dislike, they don't care. They do their own job. So in this way, there is no suffering in their mind. Cessation or suffering. A little or a little bit or more or complete. It depends. The keeping up and relinquishing of craving, freedom from it, and non reliance on it. So that means if we overcome craving, if we can, if we can stop craving, that means cessation of problem. If you don't have a craving, so that means all your suffering will be stopped. So that is a cessation of suffering. This no better to the cessation of suffering is to be realized. You have to realize by following the no better path. This no better to the, the realization of suffering is to be realized. Such a happen. So here, nibbana is used as a dukkha nidora. But of course, this is the actual nibbana. But even though you do not attain actual nibbana, if you can reduce the amount of craving, then you will have a peace of mind. Temporary nibbana. Temporary nibbana. <clears throat> the last one is the, the way leading to cessation or suffering. Dukkha nidora gamini padipada. Now this bhikkhus is the noble truth of the way leading to cessation or suffering. It is this, the noble full path. So that means the way and the practice to be so mind, to nibbana, is the noble full path. So what are the noble full path? Right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effect, right mindfulness, right concentration. So these are the noble full path. Don't worry, we will go in detail later part. This noble truth or the path or the way leading to cessation of suffering is to be developed. Here, to be developed. You have to develop and you have to increase and you have to cultivate to have more noble truth. For noble truths, oh, sorry, the noble for path, the noble for path. For that reason, so to develop the noble for path, it's called meditation. Based on this one, 
one of the definition of meditation is developing the noble eightfold path. Question? No, right? Okay, let's go. Perfectly enlightened one. In the first sermon, the Buddha said that he claimed to be perfectly enlightened one or to claim to be the Buddha only after he realized the Four Noble Truths. The Four Noble Truths, as they really are, in their three phases, Tipriyuvata and Tre Aspect, Pradasakara. Actually, only after the Buddha realized Four Noble Truths in their three uh, phases, and tray aspect. That is very important in the first salmon. So, so what is the three phases and tray aspect? It's not new. The knowledge or the each truth that is, uh, this is the noble truth of suffering. If someone know, if someone know, this is the noble truth of suffering. This is the noble truth of the original suffering. So this is the noble truth of cessation of suffering. And this is the noble truth of the way leading to cessation of suffering. So that is called the knowledge of each truth. Now we have four, right? Four. And second one, the knowledge of the text to be accomplished regarding each truth. So that me, regarding with the first noble truth, if someone understand the noble truth of suffering is to be fully understood. So the first truth, suffering have to be understood fully. So that is the text or you are mission, thing that you have to do regarding with the first, um, uh, the first noble truth, you have to understand fully. Ajahn Sumedho is a very senior, senior man from England. And he, when he talk about four noble truths, I, I understand how to say, he explained about understand. And, uh, Understand can be divided into two, and uh, and stand. If you stand under the tree, you will see everything in the trees. If you stand under, uh, how do you say that, under the monasteries or some, uh, something, if you, if you are standing under something, now you will understand that one fully. But here also he said that if we are very aware of our suffering, our problem, and we understand the first noble truth, understand. So we have to stand under, right? We have to stand under. So here, uh, the knowledge of the text uh, regarding with the four noble truths, regarding with the first one, you have to understand fully. That is your, your text, thing that you can do. And second one, the original suffering, you have to abandon craving. That is your text. And third one, you have to realize cessation of suffering. You have to realize Nibbana. And the fourth one, you have to develop or cultivate. That is the text. So if we look at the second one, we have four, right? The first noble truths have to understand fully. And second noble truths have to abandon. And third noble truths have to realize. And the fourth one have to develop. 
That is your task. And two phases. And the last one is uh, uh, the knowledge or accomplishment regarding each truth. So that is it. This noble truth or suffering has been fully understood. The Buddha fully understand that he has been fully understood. This noble truth, second, uh, the first one. And the Buddha fully understand that he has been abandoned, craving, second noble truth. And the Buddha knew that he had been, uh, so he realized and second noble truth, and the Buddha understand that he developed, already developed the noble evil path. So that is called the knowledge or accomplishment. So one, two, three. So these are three phases. So if we, what is prayer aspect? Try aspect me uh, are obtained by applying, multiplying the three phases to the false truth. Not uh, applying or multiplying the three phases to the four truths. That means, um, how do you say, the knowledge of four noble truths. That is the first phase. You have to understand four noble truths. So as we have a four, so that means four aspect. A second phase, you have to, you must have the knowledge of the text. So you must know what you have to do regarding with the four noble truths. The first one, to understand. Second one, to abandon. And third one, to realize. And the fourth one, to develop. So as we have four noble truths, we have four aspects. And the last one, the knowledge or accomplishment. Someone who really is, uh, how to say that, realize the four noble truths, he understand, he have accomplishment in uh, four noble truths. So all together, three aspect. You got it? <laughs> I think uh, for those who are not uh, not very clear, and you can read uh, Bekubori note. You can read Peku Bori Note uh, 3, uh, 382 in the Soda, in the first Amen, there is the note in your paper. You can read uh, note number 382. 382. You can read it, right? <clears throat> okay. You got it? I hope, I hope. Eh? So regarding three phases, three phases of me, regarding with uh, the first noble truth, um, so have to understand as a suffering, the first one. And regarding, regarding with the second one, so have to understand second noble truth, and third noble truth, and fourth noble truth. In the first phase, and you have a four, right? And second one, you have to know task. You have to know what you can do regarding with the four noble truths. The first one, to understand. Second one, to abandon. And third one, to realize. The fourth one, to develop. Then one phase, so that me. And uh, in that phase, uh, we have a four aspect. And the last one, the knowledge of accomplishment. If you really understand Four Noble Truths, that's your accomplishment. You know it as your accomplishment. Okay, so that is altogether three aspect. 
we can multiply 4 into 3. That means 3. Then that is what the Buddha taught. Then after listening, and the, uh, the, the Soda record that, why this discourse was being spoken by the Buddha, there arose in the venerable Corninya, the dust free, stainless vision or the dam. Stainless vision or the dam. That means he have the vision or the dam. He, re he relied the dam. Wherever it is subject to arising, it's all subject to cessation. That is very important lines in the Pali Canon. Whoever becomes Sotapanna, Pali Canon record in such a way. If Kin Bambi Sara becomes Sotapanna, Pali Canon mention the same thing. If Ipaka becomes Sotapanna, Pali Canon mention the same thing. So that means if you look at this, this line, this Pali line, Yankenchi, Samudhiya Dhamma, Sapanta, Nidora Dhamma. That's a very important line. It's important to understand this line. Wherever it's subject to arising, is all subject to cessation. You were born in this life, there's arising. As you have a, the nature of arising, you also have the nature of cessation. You will cease one way or another, or sooner or later, not sooner or later, maybe uh, when the time came. So that is realization. Normally, as we have a lot of ignorance, as we do not have mindfulness, we think that. We, we, normally, we do not think we were dying. <laughs> Even someone who is in there 100 years, they never think they were dying. <laughs> but if you think you were dying one day, you're wise. You're wise, you know? That's very important, important realization. Whatever is subject to arising, it's all subject to cessation. So after listening the Four Noble Truths taught by the Buddha, the venerable Karnina becomes sort of pan, realizing that all the five aggregate, form, feeling, perception, volition of formation, and consciousness, they have the nature of arising. For that reason, they also have the nature of cessation. You have a baby, the nature of arising, the baby arises, but one way or another, they will disappear. And you have a many, the nature of arising, one way or another, will disappear. You have a popularity, one way or another, forget about it. Everyone will forget about it, <laughs> so not later. So there are many kings in the, in the past. So they are very great in their time, but nobody remember right now. So I think uh, it's very important to understand our feeling arises. As our feeling arises, the nature of arising, it also has the nature of cessation. It will stop. Whether pleasant or unpleasant feeling. Your pleasant bodily feeling, unpleasant bodily feeling arises. One way or another, it will disappear. So that is understanding. Whatever is subject to arising is all subject to cessation. That is the nature of impermanence. Everything is impermanent for that reason. If you understand uh, the nature of impermanence, then, uh, then you, you will have... If, uh, suppose um, if you understand the nature of impermanence, then you're aware of it, 
if something happened in your life, something big changes, your beloved one died, or you lost your property, or you lost your job, then if you understand the nature of impermanence, you will not have suffering, you will not suffer, you will not cry. The more you understand the nature of impermanence, the more you have less suffering. For that reason, it's very important. To be mindful, mindfulness, right understanding, that is a part of the Noble Eightfold Path. If you are following the Noble Eightfold Path, no suffering at all. So, in the what uh, in the book, what the Buddha taught by Opula Rahula, and he said that a being, whether human beings or animals, a thing, everything, your house, your family, your job, many and everything, or a system, a system of uh, society or government system, and also the, the system in the temple, in the family. If it has within itself the nature arising, the nature coming into being has also within itself the nature, the gain, and its own cessation and distraction. So that is a uh, whether it is a being, or a thing, or a system, anything. So they have the nature arising, they arise, they appear. But one day, it will disappear. For that reason, if you practice meditation, if you develop your mindfulness, then you will attain a deep concentration. What that, with these deep concentrations, you will, be able, you will be able to realize everything come and go, everything come and go. Your mind, your physical body. Even your own mind, even your own physical body is always changing, impermanent. If something changes happen in your life, outside of your body, no suffering at all, because your realization, understanding, the nature of impermanence. That's very important, very important. If you really understand the nature of impermanence, or your own body, or your own mind, then changes outside will not affect your mind. If a lot of changes outside of your own body, even your own body, so you will not change your mind. If your mind is unshaken, not shaking, then no suffering at all. People will die, and you may, you may lose your job, you may lose your money, you may lose your reputation, even reputation. So those changes in permanent nature were not shaking your mind. And People will look at you in a different way. Their uh, perception will be changing all the time. Their feeling toward you will be changing all the time. If you realize the changes in your mind, in your body, your own mind, your own body, you will understand better the changes outside. Outside changes. For that reason, this realization is very important. Everything that has the nature of arising has the nature of cessation. That is, uh, so if you see that Pali line, so that me, uh, Venerable Cornelia, attain uh, Sotapan, became Sotapan. We call it the I know the Dhamma, Dhamma Chaku. Dhamma Chaku. <coughs> Question? Okay, no question. Let's go. let's continue. The wheel of the dam. 
So after realization of uh, when the recording begins of the piano, then the soda recorded that the wheel of the dhamma, dhamma chaka, has been set in motion by the blessed one. But here, set in motion me, the Buddha has been preaching the Four Noble Truths. That Four Noble Truths, which cannot be stopped, it's a very important one, which cannot be stopped, nobody can deny. Which cannot be stopped by any ascetic, or Brahmin, or Deva, or Mara, or Brahma, or by anyone in the world. If you look at explanation of the first noble truth, the sufferings, nobody can deny. For that reason, it's very important. Which cannot be stopped or which cannot be denied anywhere in the world. So that is the noble truth. That is the truth or reality. Nobody can deny. In Nada Soda, Maha Sihat Nada Soda, the Buddha taught to Venerable Sariboda. The Buddha said that no one can challenge his claim that his teaching lead the one who practices it to liberation from suffering. No one cannot challenge. The Buddha claimed that if someone follow his teachings, they will stop their suffering and they will get liberation from suffering. No one cannot challenge. After hearing the first sermon <coughs> and after Venerable Korninya became sort of Pana, so that means he relied for noble truth. For noble truth. Then the blessed one, Arta, this inspire utterance. Koninya has indeed understood. Koninya has indeed understood. It's very happy. Here, utterance. Udana. So when the Buddha is very happy, he utter utterance. He speak out from his mouth. Because Koninya is the first one who understands the Four Noble Truths for the first time. The Buddha is very happy. For that reason, he said that Koninya has indeed understood. You got my point, you know. If, if, we, if we talk in a simple way, eh? I'm explaining. So people are looking at me. I'm not sure whether they understand. <laughs> if you understand what I say, then I'm very happy you got my point. <laughs> He also, Venerable Korninya, you know, he got the point of the Buddha for noble truth. For that reason, the Buddha speak calm. Korninya has indeed understood. So in this way, the Venerable Korninya acquired the name Inya Korninya. Inya Korninya in Bali. Korninya who has understood. So uh, Venerable Korninya is the first one who requested the Bora to become a bhikkhu. Here is very important. Only Venerable Karaniya became Sotapanna, he requested the Bora to become the, uh, a monk. Then, according to commentary, so the Bora talked about four noble truths. The first day, Venerable Karaniya became sort of banana. Second day, and another monk. And third day, another monk. And the fourth day, another monk. And the fifth day, Venerable Asachi. So, the Bora preached the Four Noble Truths for five days. Each day, a monk or a, one, of the, one of the five became sort of banana. So that means, if you look at uh, the commentary explanations, uh, the first sermon just recorded for noble truth. 
So the Buddha spent five days. It is just the summary of Buddha's teachings for those five days. So in, the, in those times, the Buddha may teach other things as well, including dependent originations. So when we are learning dependent originations, so you will understand that uh, dependent originations and Four Noble Truths are not different. It is only just the different approach to teach the Four Noble Truths. Okay, so this is a, the first sermon. And to conclude, so what is the, the first sermon? Dhammachaka. So the Buddha start to teach Four Noble Truths. So uh, there are three parts in the, the first sermon. The first one, so the Buddha suggested that to avoid two extremes. And second one, the Buddha declared the discovery of the Four Noble Truths. And third one, the Buddha explained in details about uh, Four Noble Truths. So three part. Okay, I think, I hope you understand. I hope you got my point. <laughs> okay, now let's go, let's study about suffering, the first one. That is what the Buddha taught in the first sermon. Now this bhikkhu is the noble to the suffering. Path is suffering. Actually, I'm not reading in details because I have already uh, seen uh, Sacha Vipanga Soda, the disposition of the truth. Majjhima Nikaya, Soda number 141. Soda number 141. So all, the, all these uh, sufferings are explained in detail in the soda. Sacha vipanga, sacha means the truth. Vipanga means analyzing or uh, giving explanation in detail. Sacha vipanga. So in that soda, the Buddha was staying in Isi Padana in Baranasi, the same place where the Buddha preached the first sermon with a lot of monks. So at the time, the Buddha retold uh, that uh, he preached the first sermon to a group of five monks. Then, uh, and the Buddha said that, um, later I will, I, will, I will go to that sota. So I think, um, such a Vipanga Soda, you can find detailed explanation of suffering. So regarding with the path, so it is a so the num uh, page number one zero nine eight, one zero nine eight. Para number eleven. So the Buddha explained that uh, he talked about the first sermon in this place, uh, Isi Patana and Deer Park. And he said that Venerable Saribodha and Mauklana are wise, associate with them. And he said that Venerable Saribodha is uh, the wise one who can preach for noble truth just like himself. So the Buddha uh, ro rose from his seat, then went to the monasteries. And Venerable Saribodha taught to the monks, explaining what is suffering, what are the suffering, explaining in detail. Last week I explained that uh, detailed explanation can be found in and some other soda as well, including Mahasadipatthana soda. But I, I, I keep this soda. The reason is it is re, uh, very relevant to you. So here, the bath is suffering. 
According to this soda, you give birth in the new life that is suffering. Aging is suffering. You, you grow old, and you, you are hair getting uh, gray, eh? getting gray. You have a, your bones are deter, uh, deteriorating, changing oil. So growing old, that's also suffering. And if you look at this, uh, this order, you will find the aging of beings in the various order of beings, they are old age, the brokenness of the teeth, greatness of hair, and wrinkling of skin. Your skins are getting wrinkly. Huh? Declining of life, weakness of faculties, your eyes, your ear, getting worse and worse. So that is the aging. Can you deny? That is the truth. Sacha, right? That's the truth. Nobody can deny. You know, we are getting older and older. Our teeth, our faculties, body showing aging. That is a suffering. But if you practice, if you follow the noble eightfold path, those changes in your body will not affect your mind. You may you know, some people, they don't want to see, uh, want to see gray hair, and they will take out. Huh? And they will make cut, you know, they are wrinkle, like this. So they cannot accept the real nature of things. They cannot accept impermanence, nature of the body. For that reason, they are suffering. Because they have craving toward their body. <clears throat> the craving is the cause of suffering. If you practice mindfulness and right view and right intention, then you understand that these are cannot be avoided and avoidable. So those changes in your body, in your mind will come. So that is right view. One of the noble eightfold path, one of the factors of noble eightfold path. If you are mindful, then those changes in your body were not shaking your mind. Then, illness. No need to explain, right? You just read the soda. And death. That is the mysterious things in our life. So we are afraid to die. You know, the every hand, do not die because they do not have a craving. Some heroes in the, uh, in the war, they do not die, they do not afraid to die. Opposite, they have too much ego. <laughs> if I'm afraid, my reputation will be tarnished. You know. If I show my fear to all my colleagues, you know, soldiers, and they were, how do you say, I wear my reputation as a hero, as a soldier, will be tarnished. So that, that is a, a lot of ego. They have an attachment to their reputation. Ego, opposite. <laughs> they, do not, they do not afraid to die. Every hand, because of, uh, he doesn't have a craving. But heroes, they have a craving toward their reputation. <laughs> Opposite. That, that one also not good. Huh? That's also not good. For that reason, Dalai Lama, you know, when he interviewed, and he said that if a dog is running after him, going to bite, he will run away. <laughs> he said that. How to solve? <laughs> he said that I will run away. <laughs> if he have ego, you know, if he afraid his reputation as a, uh, his holiness as a Dalai Lama, he will not run away, you know? He will just stay and the dog will bite him. <laughs> no, the way he, he explained, I, I like it, you know? 
he will run away because the dog does not know. Huh? The dog does not know. President Lincoln, the United States, he said that don't uh, I say don't fight with the dog. <laughs> don't fight with the dog. You know they, they do not know you know what is the right and what is the wrong. So what I want to say is um, <clears throat> everyone afraid of death. The commentary, the Mabra commentary said that two people. Two people do not fear our death, Arahan, because of lack of craving, lack of Sakha deity. But heroes, hero actually in that commentary, see, animes, just like a horse, you know, horse and bull, you know, they will fight, you know, win, or win. They, they will fight with their opponents. So look like they, do not have, they don't have any fear to die because. They have their own ego, identity. I should not afraid. When they are young, when we are young, we fight, you know, with our other people. By that time, you know, no fear, because of ego, you know, because of ego. So I think these are, you know, these suffering or these problem cannot be denied, you no. Know? By anywhere in the world. Bath, aging, illness, and death is suffering. Union with what is displeasing is suffering. As I earlier said that, actually, um, this soda, I don't know why, this soda does not mention this line. Union with what is displeasing suffering, separation from what is pleasing in suffering. You cannot find in such a Vipanga Soda. But you can find in such a Sanyoda and the first salmon. The reason is the reason is two different Nikayas. Because each Nikayas are memorized and learned by heart by different a group of minds. Sometimes we have slightly different chain, you know, slight difference between two sodas. It's just an example, just for knowledge. So these uh, differences are not very important. Not very important. But here, I think, when you read the soda, carefully re read the sodas, this line is not mentioned. Union with what is displeasing suffering. Separation from what is pleasing is suffering. That is mentioned in uh, Sounda Nikaya. The commentary of uh, the commentary of um, Sounda Nikaya mentioned that uh, union with what is displeasing. So that means uh, you associate with something something that you do not like. You are sitting with someone you do not like. You're walking in a jog you do not like. And you are traveling to somewhere that you do not like. You are eating some food that you do not like. That is all the suffering. But if you can change your attitude, no suffering at all. Changing attitude me, following the noble evil path. That's very important, you know? You are living in the same place, but you just change your attitude with the noble evil path. Then there's no suffering at all. But if you cannot change, or if you cannot practice the noble evil path, you still have a suffering. Another one, separation from what is pleasing in suffering. If you are not eating the food you do not like, that is also suffering. If you have to separate from someone you love, that is also suffering. But if you practice the noble full path, even you live separately with your beloved one, no suffering at all. The point here is, 
if you follow the noble for path. So that is the path to cessation of suffering or stopping of your problem. The key point is the no way for path, you know? Very important. So uh, when we are living, especially, uh, I think it's uh, the same as everyone. When I was living, uh, when I was young, I used to think that if that guy is not here, the place will be very pleasant to stay. <laughs> We don't like, you know, someone, no? we don't like someone. But that guy, you know, uh, left the place. But another guy, another guy will replace. <laughs> <laughs> now I change my attitude according to the noble evil path. Whoever I live with, you know, live with the noble evil path. Whether I don't like or I like, doesn't matter. <laughs> Change attitude, right? Follow the noble evil path. That is, I think, uh, human mind. If you stay think that uh, it is suffering to stay with someone, so that means you're not following the noble evil path. So there will be one or two cases, you know, uh, how to say, uh, there, there is always imperfection in our life. It can be, you might think that uh, celebrities, certain actresses, and they are very famous, they have a lot of money. You think that they are very happy, their life is very, how do you say, it, uh, enjoyable, but totally wrong. You know? And they dispose their happiness in life. So that means our life is not perfect. So the thing is, we have to change our mind. We have to follow the noble evil path. Then only wherever you live, whoever you live with, in any kind of situation you are in, so you will be happy all the time if you are staying with the noble evil path. Right? Changing attitude, not changing the the place. <laughs> not to get what one wants is suffering. As I earlier said that, life is not perfect. We will not get what we want. But if we have a craving, you know, craving, a lot of craving, then we'll not be happy. You will suffer. If we remove the craving, whether you, don't, you, you got or you do not got what you want, doesn't matter. You just accept it. That doesn't mean that, doesn't mean that uh, you have to give back everything, doesn't mean. <laughs> the Buddha didn't give back for his head, right? He trying to take care of his head. He trying to take care of his body. He eat the food. And he stay in suitable place. No need to give birth. But situation is that we may get what we do not want. So uh, then if we are following the noble evil path, then there will be no suffering. Not to get what one wants is suffering. Actually, here, I think uh, you can read the soda uh, in detail. Actually, no need to explain in detail, very clear. In brief, the five aggregates subject to clinging are suffering. So this is a technical term that we need to explain. In brief, the five aggregates subject to clinging are suffering. So like later, we were I think most of you know we have five aggregate. Our physical form, our perception, our feeling, our volitional activities, our action, then consciousness. So these are five aggregate. 
So these five aggregates are subject to cleaning. We clean our perception. And we clean our feeling. Sometimes you will, you, will, you, you will have a pleasant or unpleasant feeling. You cling to it. And you clean your physical body. Something outside that is subject to clinging, subject to craving. And you clean your consciousness or mind. So these are suffering. If you clean your body, if you clean to your perception, your feeling, your volitional formation, and your consciousness, that is suffering. So actually it's a technical term. Later I will explain uh, with the help of um, Wisori Maga. This noble truth of suffering is to be fully understood. What you have to do regarding the, the first noble truth, trying to understand fully. That's all. You cannot, you cannot do anything about your suffering, about your problem. Just trying to understand fully. That's all. You give up in this life. You are aging, growing, growing old. <laughs> your faculty, your eye, your bone, your body is getting worse and worse. <laughs> Just understand. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you may have to stay or you may have to stay a place that you do not like or stay with the someone you do not like and you may separate from someone you like separate separated from something you like or you may not get what you want just understand they are suffering then five aggregate, we have our physical form or the form outside, the first aggregate. Second one, we have a perception. Perception about a person. Perception about a monastery, a country, a place, anything that is perception. Then feeling, it can be good and bad. Yeah. Volitional formation, it really is a technical term. Volitional activity. Sometimes you do with the state of mind, with the anger. That is volitional formation. Sometimes you do something with the greed, jealousy. So that is volitional formation or mental activities. Actually, I like the word mental activities. Normally, uh, we have our mental activities. Our mind is thinking. And the last one is, uh, how do you say, consciousness of the mind. So these five aggregates are subject to clinging. If you cling to that, sometimes you, you might clean your own body, let's see, uh, let's turn here. Uh, let's turn here. Uh, I used to be very handsome. Are very beautiful like this. <laughs> now my beauty is gone like this. Used to cling to your own body. But let's see, uh, when I was young, my mind used to be very beautiful, very lovely. Now changes. <laughs> you cling to your own mind like this, right? So like this, so these five aggregates are subject to clinging. If you cling to the fire aggregate, that is suffering. Whether it can be past, it can be future, it can be present. Any moment, any time, if you cling to that, you can cling to your own feeling. You can cling to your own perception. That is suffering. So regarding with the suffering, you just understand fully. So that is the thing that you can do. You cannot remove all these suffering. What you have to remove or what you have to abandon is second one. That's because uh, in regard to things that happened before, they arose in me, vision, knowledge, wisdom, truth, knowledge, and light. 
<coughs> so I think that uh, regarding with the suffering, then I will use three types of suffering uh, using Wisori Maka explanations. Before, before I, maybe, uh, maybe another five minutes, huh? five minutes. <clears throat> and the Four Noble Truths, Ariya Satcha, the Noble Truth, the Noble Truth, we are always talking, Ariya Satcha. Why Noble Truth? Why the Buddha used the word Noble Truth? I think that is a very important uh, explanation from Wisori Maga. So Wisori Maga explained, you know, coating some of the soda from Sauda Nikaya. The first one, so they are called, or four noble truths are called noble truth because the noble ones, the Bodhas, Pachika Bodhas, Arahans, etc., penetrate them. For that reason, it's called noble truth. The noble one understands four noble truths. For that reason, it is called noble truth. Quoting uh, Sanda Nikaya, uh, chapter 56, Sutta number 20. Another meaning, they are called noble truth because they are the truth or the noble one. But here, the noble one means the Buddha. So these four noble truths are the truth of the Buddha, not the truth of other people. For that reason, it's called Noble Truth. Using uh, Soda number 28. So in that Soda, the Buddha said that the Tagata is the Noble One, therefore, they are called Noble Truth. The good things about Wisori Mega is that wherever he sat, wherever it sat, use the Soda from Bali Canon. For that reason, uh, I always say that uh, Wisori Maga is the companion of Buddhist teachings, the companion of Pali Canon. If you want to know uh, how, how to say the important teachings of the Buddha, then you can read Wisori Maga. But of course, Wisori, reading Wisori Maga is not easy, but. Uh, I have given some of the uh, citation here. We saw it in Maga, chapter 16, chapter 16, part number 20 to 22. <clears throat> if you know all these citations, you can go and read by yourself. It will help you to read other things as well. If you know how to read, we saw it in Maga, it's easier for you to read other things as well. Uh, later, when we are talking about 40 meditation method, I want you to read So I think uh, uh, you can try to read Wisori Maga. <clears throat> this is a citation, chapter 16, uh, paragraph number, para number 20 to 22. So the Four Noble Truths are the truth of the Buddha. For that reason, they are called Ariya Satcha, the Noble Truth. And third one, they are called the noble truth because one becomes a noble person, one becomes a real by penetrating for noble truth, by understand, by realizing for noble truth. If you become, whether you are a man or a woman, if you understand for noble truth, you become a real. For that reason, it's called Ariya Satcha. And the last one, they are called noble truths because they are the truths that are noble. The truth that are noble. Here, Uthuri Mega explain what is noble. To be noble is to be not unreal. <laughs> Double negative. <laughs> to be noble is to be not real. Actually, Wizuri Maga quote 
a beautiful soda is called Tata soda. In that soda, the Buddha said that because these four noble truths are real, are the truth, not unreal. Double negatives, emphasis, they are real. Not otherwise, not otherwise. Suffering, suffering, nobody can change. The original suffering, nobody can deny. They are not otherwise. For that reason, they are called the noble truth. Very important. A Bidama used another term, paramata, ultimate realities. For noble truth can say that they are ultimate realities. Nobody can change. No can, nobody can deny. For that reason, they are called noble truth. Any question? <laughs> Today, no. <laughs> Not even one question. <laughs> eh? One question. Oh, fully understood. <laughs> you got my point. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's close our lessons. Yo vara tam bhava ro manu jesu sakya muni pakava gata ke cho bhara gato bala viriya samangi Dan-su-ka-tan-sa-ra-na-ta-mu-pe-mi Ra-ga-vi-ra-ga Ma-nin-ja-ma-sa-ken Dan-ma-ma-sang-ka-ta Ma-pa-ti-ku-lan Marurami mambagu nansu vipatan Dhammami mansaranya tamu pemi Yatha chade na mahabala mahu Chattu su su si su puri sa yu ge su Atta cha po ga la dhamma ta sa te Sangha me man sa ra na ta mo pe mi Sa tu sa tu sa tu Good night, everyone.